Hi everybody, today on Bella Renovare we are actually going to be doing the sister of this piece that I did last week. So if you guys wanna see how I do that, stay tuned. If you are new here, my name is Kristana. If you haven't noticed, I'm kind of colorful. Please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell. You will get all the latest videos that I put out when you do the bell. I try to put out something each week. Okay, everybody. So last week we did a green chippy boho finish on the nightstand, one of the nightstands. And I have a confession for you guys. So usually if I have nightstands, it takes me forever to finish them because I'll get one done and then I'm like... Uh, I don't feel like doing the other one. And so I'm forcing myself this week to do the other one, but we decided to keep them and I super, super love it. I think it looks really good in our room. I think when we move to Maine, it's gonna look really awesome because my husband and I both like a rustic, kind of colorful, cool boho feel. So this one, the green one is for my husband. This one, if you can guess, I'm gonna do some bright pink chippy boho-ness. So, I know the video last week, there was a lot of mixed reviews. I got a lot of thumbs downs and that's okay because if not everything I do is going to be everybody's style, totally fine. If anything, if you take anything from these videos, it's how to do a technique. You may not like the colors that I do, but maybe you like the technique and you wanna try something else. Or, you know, I had someone comment that it wasn't their style, but they appreciated all the artwork and everything that went into it. So I really appreciate when you can appreciate the work that goes into something. I may not like everything, but I always appreciate the art and the work that goes behind it. So anyways, I digress. We are going to do pretty much the same thing that we did last week, but we're gonna do different colors. I'm going to try a technique. So another person commented, and if this is you, thank you so much for this. She said that they take a, a blowtorch to a piece to kind of crackle it. We're not gonna take a blowtorch to it because I am accident prone and I know that I would light this on fire. So I'm going to take a heat gun and we're gonna try to crackle and bubble up the paint a little bit. I actually think I might use a little crackle on this as well. So it's not going to be the same exact thing. They are going to fit together. They're both gonna be boho, um, you know, worn chippy type looks, but it's not gonna be the same exact process. So if you watched last week, keep watching because it's gonna be different. I have really tried to amp up my game as far as putting out content for you guys. I do live in Germany and we are going back down into hard lockdown, like hard, hard lockdown as of today, Wednesday, right? Okay, so I probably will be keeping myself sane and trying to help keep everybody else sane by putting out content. So there you go. All right, anyways, now I'm done talking. Let's get started. The first thing I always do is remove the hardware. This actually fell apart. I did not realize it's in like three different pieces. They screw together. So I can reuse this sometime later, but I have removed it for now. With the other nightstand, I actually stripped the top down and did a wash. I'm actually gonna leave the top the way it is. I like the dark wood on it. So the next step will be for me to clean this piece really well. I will be using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. And what I do is I put it in some warm water, I wear gloves, and I make sure I wipe down the entire piece. After I'm done wiping down the entire piece, I go over it with warm, clean water and a clean rag. You wanna get all the residual off, otherwise you will have adhesion issues with your paint. I always flip my pieces over and clean the bottom as well. There's tons of cobwebs. So I take a paper towel, get all the cobwebs out, and then I take my white lightning and I clean the bottom and the feet and everything. I like to think that if I was my own client, I would want my piece to be nice and clean as well. I will be adding texture on the base coat, so I'll be using Dixie Belle's Peacock. I'm also gonna use their Sea Spray Texture Additive. You're gonna want a mixing bowl, you're gonna want a cheap chip brush, and you're gonna want a tongue depressor. 
First thing I do is pour the paint in the mixing bowl and then I'll add the texture additive a little tiny bit at a time. I'm gonna keep on adding it until I get almost a pancake-like batter consistency and then I know that I am ready for putting this texture on the piece. I'm gonna take my texture and I'm going to add it all over the piece with a cheap chip brush. And so I'm just gonna dab it all over the piece. I'm going to paint it on kind of like this and then dab it, dab it, dab it. I'm gonna wait for this to completely dry before I add any paint on top of it. Once my texture dried, I put a base coat of the colors I'll be blending. So the bottom color is Plum Crazy by Dixie Belle. And I went ahead and just kind of marked where I wanted to go. Before I blend, I always do base coats and that helps me visualize where my blends are gonna be and what colors I want. So the second color is Peony by Dixie Belle as well. And that's kind of a brighter pink color. So I did that one above the Plum Crazy. My third color is Honky Tonk Red, and that is a bright red color. It's gonna blend really nicely into my peony. The final color for this blend will be Flamingo, and that is a really pretty coral salmon type color. That'll be at the very top, and that will be the last color that I'm going to add on here. So I ended up doing about two to three. Some of the other colors, like Flamingo and Peony, needed three coats, and the other ones only needed two coats. So I ended up doing the two and three coats before I started blending. For blending, you're gonna need a brush for each color and you're gonna need a clean, dry, neutral brush, a mister bottle, squirt bottle, whatever you want, and then paper towels. Now it's time to blend. So what I'm doing is putting wet paint right there at that plum crazy line. And then I'm going to put some wet paint at the peony line as well. This is my blending line, and so I always make sure that I put wet paint on either side of that line. You don't have to put wet paint on the entire section, just at that line right there. And so then what I do is I actually spritz it with water, and then I do circles with the Plum Crazy brush, and then I'll do horizontal and vertical. But for this one, I decided that I didn't like where that line is, so if you have problems blending that actual line, you can take a little bit more of your paint, so I'm gonna take a little bit more of my Plum Crazy and go up just a little bit more so that my blending line is just a little bit further up, and that will help with making that line disappear a lot better. So what I'm doing is I'm misting, and now I'm gonna take my peony brush, and I'm going to go ahead and go down into that. I'm going vertical. I'll go horizontal as well. And then I just kind of mist in between to make sure that it's there's moisture on it so it doesn't catch. So then what I do is I take my neutral brush. So this is my neutral brush. I'm gonna mist. I go diagonal. I'll do horizontal. I will do vertical. I'll do circles. And that really helps to soften that line in between that Plum Crazy and Peony. 
Once I'm happy with that blend, I go ahead and move up. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm wetting that line right there between the peony and the honky tonk red line. So I added some peony, now I'm doing the honky tonk red. These two colors blend really, really nicely together. So I'm gonna take my peony brush and I'm gonna do some circles. And then of course, you know, I'll do horizontal and vertical to kind of just get those colors together. And then I'm gonna take my honky tonk red brush. I go down just a little bit. I like to pull the color down a little bit and then I do circles I missed it and then I think at this point I'm actually gonna just take my neutral brush and try to soften it up these two colors are so easy to blend together you don't need to work the colors as much as some of the other ones so I just missed it take my clean dry neutral brush and I just soften up that line by just moving it going vertical horizontal and diagonal Okay, so this is the last color blend and what we're doing is doing the same thing we did with the other ones. We're gonna put some wet paint there. So that's the honky tonk red. Then we're gonna take our flamingo and put wet paint on that line. So this blend is gonna be slightly different than the other ones and I'll explain to you why. So right now what I'm doing is taking my honky tonk red brush and I'm doing circles and I'm kind of going up into that flamingo a little bit more than I was with the other ones. I'm taking my flamingo brush and I'm doing circles. As you can tell, I don't do vertical and horizontal right in the beginning. I'm doing circles because I want to kind of mesh these colors together a little bit more to mute that flamingo. So I'm going to spray. Then this is my neutral brush. And what I'm doing is I'm blending, blending, doing circles. What I'm trying to do is really mesh these colors together. So I'm actually brushing over top of the flamingo. And what this is doing is it's kind of creating another little color right there. And so this is, again, this is my neutral brush and I'm just kind of going over it. So then I decided that I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. So I took some Flamingo and I brushed it right there. And then I started doing circles again. So you can do this. If you decide you want it a little bit lighter, you can add some paint, put it on there, do some circles. And then I misted it. And then again, I took my neutral brush and I did the same thing that I would do to kind of soften it up. And that helps me add that highlight of that flamingo a little bit more. I did want the corner to be a little bit more red. So I added some honky tonk red right there in the corner. And then I took my neutral brush again and just kind of circled it. So this is really easy to soften it up and get the colors where you want. And so if you want it a little bit lighter, you can kind of spot blend. If you want some red in some area, you can spot blend. I added a little bit more flamingo again right here. And all I did is just kind of add a little bit of the paint each time. And then I took my neutral brush and just did my circles and I did, you know, horizontal and diagonal. And then I was super happy with my blend. Next, I waited for the paint to dry and then I took a paint scraper and I kept the paint scraper parallel to the surface and I just added a little bit more pressure in some areas. I wanted to make sure that it was chippy, but it wasn't too bad to the point where it looked like, I don't know, like a mess. I wanted it to look a little bit more of a natural wear. And so I just took my paint scraper and I kind of gently went over areas. What this does is it actually helps expose that blue, that peacock that we used before underneath where that texture is. So as long as you kind of keep your hand controlled, you can control how much chippiness and how much paint you pull away. Just be kind of careful. Don't overdo it. You can always go back and do more, but you can't, you'd have to fix it and if you did it too much. So start lightly and step back from your piece and kind of see if you like it. If you want a little bit more, do a little bit more, but you can see right here, I just go slow and controlled. And that's what you need to do when you are using this method. I pull into your driveway, it's a Saturday night. You look like a million bucks wearing that dress I like. You're smiling, but there's something missing in your eyes. Girl, I can tell that you have something on your mind. But I will make you forget all your sorrows. Let go like there's no tomorrow. Let's have a drink, just relax. All your problems will fade. If you're ready for a good time, count on me. There's a party in the backyard, dance your problems away. I'm all about.
So I did a little experimentation on this and I took my heat gun and I put it up against the paint to kind of bubble it and create more texture. You do wanna be careful, you don't wanna get so close and allow it to bubble up so much that it actually peels off. So just get kind of close, as you can see right there, that was a previous area. And I just wanted those little bumps and added texture because this is going to be an aged old world type look. And what will happen is this will actually dry back up and then you have some really cool texture on your piece. Just like the piece before, I'm going to create some colored wax. So I'm kind of priming my, my piece with some easy peasy spray wax, the clear. It's not a primer, but what I'm doing is I always put clear wax on before I do any colored wax. It allows me to wipe the colored wax off a little bit easier. So I'm gonna put this on the entire piece and then allow it to dry. And what you do is you spray it on and then I kind of just rub it in and then I'm gonna let it dry while I'm making my colored wax. I'm using Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax. It's clear, but it looks white, and that is so that you can tell where you're putting it on on the piece. So it actually dries clear. It does look white here. So what I do is I take a tongue depressor, put it on a paper towel or a paper plate. I put a little bit of my Flamingo in there, and then I kind of just mash it in. Think about if you, you know, when you're, you're cooking and you need to mix stuff up and you, I always mash it in there and that way I have an even consistency of the wax and the paint. I take a cheap chip brush and you can see that there's quite a bit of wax on there. And I go in the areas, I pounce it in the areas and go over it. And then after I'm done doing that, I allow it to sit for a few minutes to kind of just set. And then I start wiping it away with one of my shop towels. Now, if you need to wipe away a little bit more, you can use a clear wax or your easy peasy spray wax and kind of spray the area and that will help you wipe away a little bit more of the wax. But I wanted to have a little bit more of this coral type hue on the piece. So I'm gonna do this on the entire piece and then I allow it to sit overnight. So here we are the next day. It's looking really cute. Oh, I'm super excited. So Dixie Belle came out with a new gilding wax. This is a chameleon wax. So this is kind of like a gilding wax and this is called lilac and it's an iridescent wax. It's really, really cute. It looks like a little paint can. So I just used my scissors to open it and I used one of my mermaid makeup brushes. So it does look like it's got a almost peach look to it, but that's not what it looks like when you put it on. So I went ahead and put it on my makeup brush and then you rub it on and you'll see here in a little bit, you can start seeing the iridescent shimmer of this wax. So I put this all over and put it in the corners. I super, super, super love this wax. So here is their gold gilding wax. These are more solid. So their gilding waxes are more solid. The chameleon is more of an iridescent. So this is the gold and you can see right here, these are oil based and you don't need to seal them. They are self sealing, but you can layer these waxes. So that's what I'm doing right here is layering the gold over top of the lilac chameleon wax. And so I'm putting a little bit on a makeup brush and I'm kind of just almost dry brushing it. You can push it on with your fingers if you want. And so I'm just kind of dry brushing it a little bit to add that just you know little pop of gold that will hopefully tie this whole piece in together
Okay, everybody, so this piece is done. This is the sister to the green piece. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It is a little bit different than the other one. We did different hardware and things like that. This is my nightstand. The other one is my husband's nightstand. And actually, I had someone yesterday tell me that the green one looked like awful, gross, or something like that. It looked gross and something that they would throw on the side of the road or I don't even know. So. Hopefully you don't feel like that about the green one or this one. I really like it if it's my style. No matter what, at the end of the day, even if you don't like something, be kind and be nice. So, hope you guys like this. Again, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell. Everything I use will be in the description below, that see more tab. I'm gonna also pop in the video for the green one as well. The, I mean, really, they're married, right? This is mine, the other one's my husband. So these are, this is a, the, the married couple nightstands. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next week. Happy creating everybody. If you're gonna leave me there